hey man, are, are you feeling okay? Yeah, I feel great, man. I'm just super abstract right now. Yeah, I know you're abstract, but we're, we're doing... Like Picasso right now, do you? Yeah, but we're doing yeah. abstract board games right now. Well, yeah, I know, but I want to get like into the theme because you know abstract board games always have a lot of theme to them. So. Well, that's definitely true. So let's go ahead and do abstract games. What's up, everybody? I'm Mike. I'm Nick. I'm back to normal. Yeah, you are. I'm glad you fixed that up. That was a quick turnaround. You know. Well done. Uh, we are the Brothers Smurf, and we're here to talk about abstract board games. We are, and I will say, abstract games are not like our favorite kind of game as a whole. Yeah. But I do, I love finding abstract games I do there. really like. I'm like, yes, I want more of these. It just as a whole, it's not a game that we, I don't think it's a kind of genre we tend to seek out. Right, but here we're we are. We're always happy when we find one. Right? Yeah. There's always good stuff in every category, and this is a category right here on Board Game Geek. So we're going to talk about abstract board games yeah. and the ones that we do enjoy, starting with number 10. So our number 10 is Onitama. This was like one of the first uh, abstract games I knew of like as an abstract game. It's kind of very chess-like in a lot of ways where you're moving pawns around, trying to capture your opponent's main pawn or move on to their starting space. But unlike chess where a rook always moves in a certain way, all of your pieces will move in different ways that kind of flow throughout the game. You'll have two cards and you'll choose one of those cards which dictates the type of movement you can do. And then you're gonna trade with kind of a communal card. Then your opponent goes and they trade. So the ways you move are always shifting around. So you constantly are having to get things in line and then adapt to the unknowable uh, future of what cards you're gonna have and what ability to move you're gonna have. So it's like chess next level where everything keeps changing, the rules keep changing, but it's one that we think is really neat and it comes in a very strange little square rectangle cylinder box. Our number nine is a game called Hey! That's my fish, that's my fish. Don't touch my fish. This is a really kind of cool abstract game where you are these little penguins and you're around catching fish. You're on this big ice flow and there's all these fish on it. Some of the tiles have one fish, two fish, or three fish, no red fish, no blue fish. Is it green fish? No, it's not green fish. And basically you have a number of different pen penguins depending on the player count and you're standing on an ice flow and then you have to go in a straight line and you can go as far as you want and then you'll stop on another ice flow. And whatever one you left, you get to collect that tile. Generally you want more fish. Whoever's the most fish at the end of the game wins. And so you're just kind of going around the board with your different penguins in straight lines, trying to get the most fish, but also trying to block other people. You're trying to like, ooh, I need to go over here and get this three fish before Mike can. And you can even take enough tiles off where you like, like sequester someone on like a little island, which can be good if you're on an island alone because then you can kind of go like bop, bop, bop and just get everything for yourself. And so it's this really tactical game where you're trying to position yourself to get the most fish while constantly trying to block people and like get in people's way. It's really kind of mean in that way, but it's really simple and really fun and just kind of like a cool, cool idea. There's like this really cool little penguins. One of them is just like, ah, and it's great. So number eight is Nova Luna. This is another Uwe Rosenberg abstract tile laying game that shares a little bit of DNA with patchwork. In this one, you are placing out these different tiles that will give you tasks. And those tasks mean adjacent to this tile, I want these colors. And you can have kind of flow through adjacency where I need three red, so I can have red, red, red. And so long as there's a direct flow back to that tile, you could then complete that task. Certain tiles have more than one task on them, which are harder to complete. But every time you complete a task, you get to put out one of your discs and it's a race to get all of your discs out. So you're trying to set up this kind of tableau in front of you where everything sort of helps one other task and every tile you add might help you complete a task, but it's gonna give you a new task to complete. So it's a little bit tricky and wild and there's kind of a time mechanic, like I said, similar to Patchwork and Nova Luna is just a really cool, simple and pretty abstract game. Our number seven is a game called Suro, and Suro actually has, I think, three different versions now, and uh, we've only played the main one, but they're all, I'm sure, great. But this is a game where you're gonna be placing out these tiles, and these tiles are gonna have a bunch of different pathways on them, some curves, some straights, and you have your little piece, and as you're placing tiles, when your kind of like little pathway gets extended, your piece will then go along that pathway, and your goal is to try to stay on the board the longest. That's how you win, is by being the last person on the board. If your piece ever goes through and hits the edge of the board, you're out. If you ever go through and hit someone else, you're out. But it's a really cool 
kind of tough puzzle because as you're placing a piece out, you might then connect multiple people's paths. And so then, so all the pieces then start moving around the board and you have to be like, okay, okay. Okay, if I go here, it's gonna loop me around, but then it's gonna go here, 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 and boom, hit the edge of the board. Okay, so I cannot do that. It's really, really fun and really thinky and really pretty on top of that. It's also got a really great app. It's a great, it's my go-to airplane game. If I'm on an airplane, I'm just playing Suro the entire time. It's also got a couple different versions in terms of one, you're trying to make a bunch of loops and stuff like that. It's really, really fun, but Suro is a great little abstract game. And like I said, there's three versions now, get one. I'm sure they're all great. So number six is Miyabi from Haba, which is a, a, a polyomino tile laying game where you're given these restrictions of you're building a Zen garden. And in each row of the garden that you're building, there can only be one type of feature. That might be stones, that might be certain types of greenery, there might be koi ponds and things like that. And you're trying to build those out in rows, but every turn during a round, you can only put a feature in each column one time. So you are trying to both build out a nice kind of sturdy base and then you can actually build up and stack tiles on top of each other to get multipliers for your points. But you're again trying to lay things out so that you can sort of use those one column activations each round to the best of their ability to maximize your points. So this is one that has just a nice beautiful theme. A lot of abstract games are just kind of pleasant and put you at ease and make you feel good while you play and certainly Miyabi fits that theme. So talk about a great theme on top of an ultimately relatively themeless game. Our number five is Calico. This is a game where you're trying to make a beautiful patchwork quilt and trying to attract kittens. What else do you want from board games other than that? It's perfect. And so basically you're trying to put out these tiles and you have these little hexagonal tiles. You're putting them in your little board and you're essentially trying to match colors and you're trying to match patterns. So if you have three of the same color, you'll get a button of that color. So you have three reds, you'll get a red button, great. But then you also wanna attract cats. Cats can't see color very well, but they can see patterns. So the different cats in the game, there'll be three different cats, they will want a certain amount of the same pattern. So like this kind of pattern here, and this cat wants three. And they can generally be in any kind of configuration, but you want them all connected. If you make three of that pattern, then you'll grab one of those cat tiles and come over and they're all worth points. And the game is very, very simple. You have two tiles to choose from. You put one in your patch, in your patchwork quilt, and then you grab a new tile from the three that are in the supply. And that's it. That's all you're doing. And it's really, really thinky. There are also a couple different goals on your board uh, that you want certain tiles surrounding that. So you're thinking all these different ways of trying to match colors and trying to match patterns and then trying to get these goals and you're stuck with the tiles that you have. You only have two and then you only have three to choose from each turn and it just gets really, really difficult. And it's a game that's very relaxing and nice. Like, hey, it's kind of late at night. You know, it's like eight or nine o'clock. We're kind of winding down. Let's play a quick game. You can play Calico. It's a game that's relaxing, but it's also gonna destroy your brain. And it's really, really good. So number four is this really cool indie game called Azul. No one's ever heard of it, but I think people really need to try it out. It's a great one. Azul is a classic game, kind of a modern classic that everybody loves. This was my first kind of introduction into like those beautiful, tasty uh, tiles that you want to eat types of games, that kind of category of games. So in this game, you're building a mosaic and you are trying to uh, draft these different color tiles and put them out uh, onto this kind of staging area and once you fill each line some of them have one two three four or five you can then bring them over to your kind of final mosaic uh, to then score points for adjacency and things like that so it kind of has this interesting drafting mechanism where you're trying to get all the stuff you need kind of trying to dump stuff that your opponents might have to get stuck with and can't play so that they lose a bunch of points and things like that but this was one that was just like as you probably saw took over and really swept the board gaming hobby and for good reason Our number three is Santorini, which is a really cool 3D abstract game where you are builders in Santorini, Greece, and you are trying to build up these buildings. You're trying to get your workers up to the third floor of a building. On your turn, it's very, very, very simple. You will move one of your workers and that worker has to build in one of the eight squares around them. That's it, that's all you do. And your goal is to get to the third level. So when you move, you can move up one level. And then if you move up one level two and then up to the third level, you win. But 
at the top of the third level, someone can put a dome there. Those kind of like stereotypical blue domes you see all, see all over Santorini, which are really pretty. If someone puts a dome there, you can't stand on top of that dome, so it's done. And so this is a tactical game where you're moving around trying to set yourself up to get up to the third level while trying to keep your opponent from getting to the third level on theirs. And that's just the base game. It's very simple, very straightforward, very thinky, very tactical, super fun. But then there's all these god cards. And these god cards give you all sorts of different kinds of abilities. But again, they're all very simple. So one might be like, you move and then you build twice. Or you can move as far as you want in a straight line. Or you can put domes anywhere. So you can be on the, on the ground floor, be like, dome, boom, get wrecked. And it's super, super fun. And the god cards change things up so, so much. And it's just, it's just so well produced and, and it's so simple and then the God cards add so much to it. It's really, really cool. They also have Santorini New York now, which has even like player action cards, which add to it, which is super, super cool. So check out either Santorini or Santorini New York. They're both great. Sound number two is a Reiner Knizia game called Blue Lagoon. This is a beautiful blue orange game where you are just placing out these little discs. And it has kind of this theme of like Polynesian uh, exploration on these islands, but really it's just placing out these tokens. But what you're trying to do is a number of things. You're trying to create one long chain of uh, tokens that's unbroken. You're trying to get on the various different islands and sort of have an area control of those islands for points. As you're going around exploring, you're gonna be picking up different types of items and things. There's a set collection element there. So this is one that's really, really fun because everything you're doing can give you points and you kind of want to do everything, but how do you do that so strategically? But mechanically, you're just putting out tokens on a turn and that's it. So it's super simple to get into but there's kind of some sneaky strategy you can employ with Blue Lagoon and it looks really pretty. Again, we always say if you're gonna go themeless and you're gonna paint on a theme, use some tasty glue and paint because then at least I get to enjoy what I'm seeing even if it's all like, what does this mean? And that's Blue Lagoon. Our number one is a beautiful game with just the maximum chunk in the tiles, and that is Dragon Castle. Dragon Castle is a Mahjong inspired game where you kind of have all these tiles in the middle of the board, and you are going to be drafting those tiles and then putting them on your little player board. And the tiles have a couple different colors and the, the colors also have different amounts. So if it's like swords, like the red ones are swords, you can grab like a three sword and a three sword and then you put them on your player board. And then on your player board, you want to get the same color next to each other. The patterns don't matter so much, just the colors. And if you ever get four of the colors, you then get to flip those over and get points, which is super cool. But you get more points if you flip over more. But once you have four next to each other, you have to flip them over. So you're trying to arrange them on your board in a way where you never have more than three touching. So that way you can turn over a whole bunch and get a lot more points. But then on top of that, what's cool is once they're turned over, you can then put tiles on top of them and you're kind of, the way you flip things over is you're always looking at it from a bird's eye view, so straight down. So even if something is on a different level, they're still considered to be next to each other when it comes to flipping them over. And then you can also put shrines on top of them. And the higher the shrine is, the more points it's worth. And it's just, again, very relaxing, very beautiful, awesome abstract game that's just simple. You draft some tiles, you put them over here, you flip them over, you put shrines, you get points. It's really, really great. And again, the production value is just through the roof. I love, I love pretty abstract games. They just make me so happy. And Dragon Castle is one of the best. It's our number one. Just play it, it's so good. So that was our very favorite, most favorite abstract board games. The most favorite. Yeah, the they're most all of them. really, really great. Abstract games, it's one of the things, abstract is kind of a weird category because like, a lot of all board games are abstract. If you think about any of them too long, they become very abstract. In a weird way. So we were kind of like, okay, like, what yeah, let's. What are cubes? What? This isn't a sheep. It's not a sheep. I'm sorry, it's not a sheep. No. But nonetheless, uh, that's our top 10 abstract games. Down in the comments below, let us know your top 10 abstract games. An abstract game we haven't played. We haven't played anything in the Gip series. We did our, our top 10 classics we haven't played but want to. And we talked about things like Yint. So I do want to try those kinds of abstract of games as well. But um, yeah, so down in the comments, let us know your favorite abstract games or if you liked any of these. Right, and if you want to find out about more abstract games, check out the category Same abstract category. games right here on Board Game Geek. Click browse, click categories, find yourself some abstract games. Is that easy? Yeah, and that's going to be it for us. My name is Nick. I'm Mike. We'll see you later.